The year is 2022 and it's been four years since I last made a guide on how to get started with digital art and let's face it, a lot has happened since 2018. So I feel like my old guide is pretty much outdated now and I even managed to learn a lot of new useful stuff since then and I'll be sharing it all with you guys today. In this video we'll be talking about drawing tablets what are they? How do they work? What features should you be aware of? What size should you get? Then we'll be looking into software, or as you crazy kids like to call it, apps <laughs> that you can use to draw with. And here we're going to look at paid as well as free options. And then I'm going to be sharing some beginner tips with you to get you started on your digital journey. And lastly, I'm going to throw a homage to the old video and insert this video's bloopers. It will be worth it. Trust me! <laughs> and without further ado, let's just get started and turn you into a digital artist. Whee! So in today's tablet industry, we mainly differentiate between three types of drawing tablets. The pen tablet, the pen display tablet, and lastly, the companion or system tablet. But what is a drawing tablet and how does it work? No matter which kind of drawing tablet you're looking at, it consists of two main pieces. The tablet hardware and a stylus. And stylus is just a fancy word for pen that works with the tablet. The way a drawing tablet works is that it controls the computer's cursor on the screen. The tablet's surface is responding to the stylus's tip, which imitates drawing and writing on your computer. When you're not using a program or an app that allows you to draw and write, the tablet functions as a regular mouse, kind of like a fancy touchpad where you can use a stylus instead of your finger. A stylus comes with a certain level of pressure sensitivity, also called the pen pressure. The lowest you should aim for is 1024 pressure levels, but you can get as high as 8192 pressure levels in the more high-end products. The pressure sensitivity makes it possible to vary and control the line width you're drawing with depending on how much pressure you physically add to the stylus with your hand. A stylus uses these tiny things called pen nibs to draw. They get worn down with time, but almost all tablets today come with extra pen nibs. Be sure to change the nib when it starts to look deformed or uneven, or it might start to add small scratches to your tablet surface. Most drawing tablets also come with buttons as well. These are called shortcut keys or express keys, and they can easily be mapped to any keyboard key or custom computer execution. For instance, you can map a shortcut key to save your drawing with a single click. You can map shortcut keys to drawing tools like the brush, eraser, or something else, so that you can easily access and change between them without having to use the keyboard or pick them off manually. You can usually find one or more shortcut buttons on the stylus itself. These buttons can, likewise, be mapped to any keyboard key or custom execution that you wish. I'll get into shortcuts a bit later and which ones to set up if you're a beginner. Now let's look into the three tablet categories. A pen tablet is the most traditional kind of drawing tablet. It doesn't have a screen. It comes with a stylus and usually also a few express keys. A pen tablet is always, and I repeat, always dependent on some kind of device that you need to hook it up to. And I say device because since 2018 it has actually become quite common that you can plug this kind of baby into this kind of baby. <laughs> So if you can't afford a pen tablet and a computer, look for the models that are actually compatible with your smartphone because they do indeed exist. So how do I know if it is compatible with a smartphone? Well, it's usually pretty easy to tell because the manufacturers of these tablets advertise this feature a lot when it's available. With a pen tablet, you're relying on any sort of secondary monitor. If you're using a laptop or a computer with a pen tablet, you'll be looking at the monitor when drawing, while your hand will be working down on the tablet. And obviously the same goes if you hook it up to a compatible smartphone. The pen tablet is the most affordable options of the three types of tablets. Looking at a search on Amazon reveals pen tablets for as low as $50, and in some cases even less. And if you wonder what size you should get, here's my personal rule of thumb. The closer the tablet size is to your monitor size, the more realistic your drawing experience will be. 
I just personally find it more comfortable to draw on a tablet that's about the same size as my monitor. Except of course if you're using your smartphone as the monitor, I suggest going with some kind of small size pen tablet. A pen tablet is especially good for very new digital artists who are just trying out the medium, mainly because it is the most affordable place to start. But there is one downside to a regular pen tablet, and that is that a lot of artists struggle with the fact that they're looking at the monitor up here while the hand is working down here. Most people though will get used to it and don't see a problem with this, but I personally was one of those few people who just didn't. <laughs> In that case, a pen tablet might not be the best long-term solution for you, in which case you should check out the next type of drawing tablet we'll look at, the pen display tablet. This sort of tablet is also called a drawing monitor, a screen tablet or just a display tablet. They all refer to this specific kind of drawing tablet, the one with an inbuilt screen. It works basically the same way as a pen tablet, except now you actually have a screen that you can draw directly on top of. And I cannot stress this enough, a pen display tablet also requires a device to be hooked up to. A few display tablets are also compatible with your smartphone device, but most of them will require a laptop or a computer though. Most newer display tablet models will only require a USB-C cable to work, but most of them still comes with the famous free or two-in-one cable solution. So when getting a display tablet, make sure that your device meets the necessary cable requirements. You can usually read on the tablet's product page what kind of connection options you have. A pen display tablet can come either with or without shortcut keys. Most come with shortcut keys, but some of the newer models either require an external shortcut device like the Express Key Remote for Wacom tablets, or they simply come with a full touchscreen feature as well, so you might not need the shortcut keys at all, since you can just use your fingers directly on the screen. That's not the standard though, the standard is that these tablets only work with the stylus. So what should you be aware of when you're getting a pen display tablet? You should look for a display tablet that is fully laminated. Older display tablets were made with a screen laying inside the tablet's hardware and then with a protective and responsive layer of glass-like material on top. Since there would then be a gap between the actual monitor and the surface that you draw on, it would create what's called a parallaxing effect. This would usually result in some kind of visual offset between the stylus's tip and the cursor on the screen, and that just makes it harder to draw. When a drawing monitor is fully laminated, it means that the top layer has been removed and instead a protective film has been applied directly on top of the actual monitor, removing the parallaxing effect and giving the artist a much better and comfortable drawing experience. Another thing to look for is the screen size and resolution. I've worked on display tablets as small as 12 inches and as big as 27 inches. My personal preference are the 16 inches drawing monitors. They don't take up all the space on my desk, but they still offer plenty of workspace. If you go for a drawing monitor less than 16 inches, you don't need any more than a regular full HD 9020 by 1080 display on your tablet. If you have a display tablet that's bigger than 16 inches, I would recommend getting at least a 2K resolution, not necessarily a 4K resolution, but the 2K will be great. For the 16 inch tablet specifically, I like either full HD or a 2K resolution. The price of a pen display tablet is usually higher the bigger the monitor is or the higher the resolution is. A pen display tablet lies price-wise in the middle of the free tablet categories. Some display tablets are as expensive as 3000 plus dollars, while others have more modest price tags. Again, a quick search on Amazon reveals that a pen display tablet can be bought for as low as $180, but I would personally go for those that start at $200 to $250, simply to avoid the cheapest models where it's not uncommon to see some sort of performance issues. Hey, Nadia from the future editing the video here. I completely forgot to mention that almost all tablets can be rotated and used for right as well as left-handed people. Some tablets will come pre-attached to a stand, like the XP Pen Artist 24, which means the tablet cannot be rotated. But instead, they build express keys on each side of the tablet so that left-handed people can use it as well. So if you're left-handed, you almost have all the same options as those who are right-handed. I just thought that was important and I wanted to mention it. Future Nadia, out! 
And lastly, let's look into the third category of drawing tablets, the companion or system tablet. This type of tablet is also commonly referred to as a pen computer, but this does not only have to be a dedicated drawing tablet. In this category, you will also find the iPad, Surface tablets and other Android based tablets that can work with a stylus. The main difference between this type of drawing tablet and the others is the fact that system tablets have an inbuilt computer, which means they do not require a separate device to be hooked up to. There are not a lot of system tablets made by drawing manufacturers. Wacom currently offers one model, the Mobile Studio Pro, which costs approximately $3,500. I use an iPad myself along with an Apple Pencil. The iPad was approximately $1100 and the Apple Pencil was $125. It's still way more expensive compared to getting a regular display tablet, but if your budget allows it and you prefer to have a standalone device, this might be a good option for you. If you have any other Android based tablet, for instance a Microsoft Surface or a Galaxy tablet, you can investigate whether you can get a stylus for these. I know that Microsoft made a stylus for tablets, the Surface Slim Pen, and Samsung developed the S Pen for their tablets. Not to mention that there are third parties that also make pens for all types of tablets. I don't have any experience with these pens though, so I can't tell you if they're really good or not. If I were you, I would take the pen you're looking at and search for it on YouTube and see a few reviews before making up your mind. And that's a piece of advice I'd like to extend to any tablet or stylus you're looking into. Always check out a few reviews of the tablet model you want to buy. That way you'll get a better impression of whether or not the tablet is any good or not. I can personally recommend drawing tablets made by Wacom and XP Pen. I've used their products a lot. And of course I can also warmly recommend using an iPad for drawing. Other brands that I have less experience with personally, but that are loved by many in this community are Huion and Artisol. So getting a drawing tablet is just one of the two major parts of becoming a digital artist. The other part of course is the drawing program or the app if you will. There are a lot of different options when it comes to drawing programs. The options will depend mainly on two things. One, your budget and two, the device you're using your tablet with. I will not be giving a demonstration on each drawing program I'm going to mention in this video because I think it's more important that you try out a few for yourself before choosing your go-to program. So I'm going to make an easy overview for you that you can check out with some of the most beloved art programs in this community. Let's start with the programs for your computer. If the device you're using with your drawing tablet is a laptop or a computer, you can use Adobe Photoshop, which comes at a monthly fee, but you can try it out for free for one month. This used to be my go-to drawing program for many years, but that has since changed because I feel like other programs that are designed directly for artists are just way better now. Speaking of which, I highly recommend Clip Studio Paint. You can try it out for free as well. I have an affiliate link in the description if you're interested. If you ask me, this is just the superior drawing program as of 2022. And in part two to this video, I'll be demonstrating using Clip Studio Paint. On the computer, you only have to pay for Clip Studio Paint license once. And a few times a year, there's even up to 50% sale on a license. You'll be fine with just the pro license to begin with. If you're more into a drawing program that mimics traditional tools exceptionally well, you should look into Corel Painter. And here are some drawing programs I do not have a lot of experience with myself, but are considered great and very loved in this community. Some of them are open source and completely free, others comes at a one-time fee. If your device is an iPad or an iPhone, here are some suggestions to drawing apps. Procreate is probably the most preferred drawing app for Apple devices and you've probably heard about it or seen it before. Procreate is designed specifically for Apple's devices and comes at a one-time fee. But you can also get Clip Studio Paint for your iPad as well as your iPhone. Other options are Autodesk Sketchbook, Ebis Paint X and Adobe Photoshop Sketch. Lastly, if you're using an Android device, here are some of your options. The programs between Apple and Android devices overlap a lot, so it's possible that some of them are available for both operating systems, even though I didn't list them here like that. I'm actually well under the impression that getting the hardware and the software to get started on your digital journey is not what people find the hardest part at all. The hardest part comes right after, when you have to create those few first digital pieces. 
And the reason that this step can be so hard to take is because it's incredibly easy to get overwhelmed with all the new features suddenly available to us. I mean, the first time I opened Clip Studio Paint, and this was even with years of knowledge from drawing in Photoshop, my immediate thought was just, where the heck do I start? And in my next video, which is going to be a follow-up to this video, I'm going to do a super duper easy introduction to drawing digitally in a drawing program. When the video comes out, I'll put the link to the corner up here and in the description down there, so make sure to ring the bell so you'll get notified once it comes out. I did, however, already make a video called Overcoming Digital Art, Real Struggles and How to Beat Them. It's a beginner-friendly video where I answer questions from my community about getting into digital art despite the hardships. I even mention the very first baby steps to take and also how to strategically search for YouTube tutorials that you're going to need. So definitely check out Overcoming Digital Art, the video link is in the description. But besides those two videos, here are some general advice that I like to give to beginner digital artists in order to avoid getting overwhelmed in the beginning. My first advice is get familiar with your tools. You've probably heard an advice like this before. Oh, just play around in your drawing program. It will come to you. You'll get good in no time. And while I do believe that that is not a bad advice at all, learning by doing is awesome. But I don't think that particular advice is going to help someone who has no prior knowledge with drawing programs whatsoever. So the very straightforward and simple thing to do is to follow tutorials. Yes, that's what I said. Uh, tutorials. <laughs> I will personally suggest that you go on a place like YouTube and search up a beginner tutorial on your drawing program. Because before you can start to create magnificent digital illustrations, and trust me, you will, you have to know how to use your tools. In my experience, beginners sometimes tend to focus a little too much on how to get good at anatomy and how to start developing their style from day one, when what you actually should be focusing on is just getting familiar with your tools. You can kind of compare it to learning how to pick up a pencil and put it down on paper, except we're talking about digital art here. It's way more complicated and comprehensive than just picking up a pencil and putting it down on paper. So you will be doing yourself a huge favor by starting with the tools. You should definitely also look up a tutorial on how to use your specific drawing tablet. A very early step that I don't think a lot of people realize that they need to take. Speaking of your drawing tablet, if you're using a pen tablet or a pen display tablet, you should set up your shortcuts. I recently came across a digital artist who were only using the magnifying glass inside their program to navigate around on the canvas. You don't have to struggle like this. Most art programs shortcut to move and drag the canvas is the space bar. Go into your template software and set up the shortcut on one of your buttons on the stylus. Now you can move around freely, only using the stylus. No magnifying glass necessary. Other shortcuts I will recommend setting up for is zooming in and out. If you have more buttons available, I will also suggest setting up a shortcut for flipping your canvas, the brush tool, the eraser, as well as the color picker tool. Those are probably going to be your most used tools in the beginning. And here's a piece of advice I actually also gave back in 2018, but that I still want to emphasize even today. Watch real-time digital painting. You can find some pretty good videos on YouTube, but watching digital art streams is also a very good source for learning. Speed paints or drawing time lapses are better when you're a bit more experienced, because that requires that you can recognize the tools being used even at a pretty fast pace. However, watching real-time footage allows you to watch every little step that the artist takes, allowing you to peacefully follow along in their tracks. And if you can find a real-time drawing video where the artist checks in once in a while to explain the process, jackpot. And lastly, I'd like to focus on a piece of advice that I was never told, but that I had to discover for myself, and that is make mistakes. How do you expect to get good if you don't make mistakes? There are a lot of don't make these mistakes videos on YouTube. Heck, I even made one myself. But these videos are there because we made mistakes. 
You have got to make mistakes before you can succeed. Who cares if the airbrush is not a good shading tool? And who gives a shit if you use the gradient instead of shading? If colors and color theory overwhelms you, just use existing color palettes from the internet. If it helps you on your journey, do it. There shouldn't be any sort of rules, written or unwritten, that stops you from jumping into this with both feet. The absolute only mistakes you are not allowed to make is to not try at all. Just do it. And with that being said, let's end this video on a high note. I put some useful beginner-friendly videos in the description below, so be sure to check them out. And please remember to subscribe and smack the ding dong if you want to be notified when part 2 comes out. As I mentioned, that is going to be a very beginner-friendly video where I take you through the first baby steps of starting to draw digitally in a drawing program. And definitely remember to check out this video, Overcoming Digital Art, Real Struggles and How to Beat Them because those are going to explain some of the baby steps that you could take from here once you have your tablet and your drawing program picked out. Once again, thank you so much for watching, guys! And please remember to leave a like and a comment. I'm usually most active in the comment section in the first 24 hours after the video goes up. So hopefully I will see you down there. And until next time, enjoy the summer. If you're not dying from the heat, send some of the heat up here. <laughs> Bye! And then we'll be looking into... So I'm going... I'm a YouTuber! Let's stop you from... Okay, good. Deal with it. I did it! I did it! <laughs>